In this segment, we're going to talk about throttling devices. And a throttling device is a flow restricting device that causes a significant decrease in the pressure. So there are various designs. You've got um, a valve that you can open and close. You've got a porous plug design. You've got capillary tube arrangements. There are lots of different designs, but they all accomplish the same thing. These are commonly used in refrigeration and air conditioning applications. And in this, in this class, no matter what the design of the throttling valve itself is, this is the schematic that I'm going to use. Essentially, an X with the ends kind of capped or two triangles put together like that. So here we've got a throttling valve. We're looking at a porous plug design and a, and a valve type throttling device. And you can see that the way that I've drawn my boundary, it sort of encompassed the regions a little bit upstream and a little bit downstream. So the first thing I'm going to do if I want to analyze this, I'm going to, I'm going to apply my conservation of mass. So I've got dm dt equals the sum of the m dots coming in and the sum of the m dots going out. And then I'm going to apply some appropriate assumptions. If I want to make the assumption of steady state, then that dm dt goes away. And I can see that the mass flow rate at the inlet and the outlet are exactly the same, so I could just drop that subscript. And now I just need to apply my conservation of energy, or my first law of thermodynamics for an open system. So here's my, here's my first law for an open system. And because this thing is operating at steady state, or I'm assuming it does so anyway, I'm going to set that DETT term to zero. And now I'm going to look at what other assumptions I can make. So for these devices, typically your heat transfer is going to be negligible. You're not looking at any work. Um, you've got flow work, of course, required to push the fluid through and, re and remove the flow or remove the, ma remove the mass from the system boundary. Um, but that's accounted for once again by the enthalpy term. There's no significant change in potential energy and there's, there is not much change in kinetic energy. And sometimes people get a little bit stuck on this because the velocity, if you look in the immediate region of that throttling device, the velocity may increase. Um, and so the kinetic energy will increase as well in the immediate region. But the way that we've drawn our control volume, we've kind of, we've, we've widened that range a little bit. And so if you make measurements upstream and downstream, you can see that the kinetic energy change is very small between those two regions. And so if I go back to my first law and I make all of those assumptions, all I'm left with are the n dots and the h's. And if I kind of bring everything out, bring everything together, I've got m dot one and h one equals m dot two and h two. And then I look at back at my conservation of mass and I see, well, those m dots are exactly the same. So what I'm left with is h one and h two are equal to one another. In other words, the change in enthalpy is zero. And for this, we call it an isenthalpic process. So for throttling devices in this class, you can model these as isenthalpic. And when you make that, make that assumption that the throttling device is an isenthalpic device, what you're doing is making all the assumptions that are listed here. It's steady state, there's no heat transfer, there's no work, there's no potential energy change, and there's no kinetic energy change. So all five of those assumptions give you that the process is isenthalpic. All right, well, I hope that was helpful and thank you for watching.